Welcome to the Uniweb Interview Show. I'm your host, Matthew Whiteside. Today I'm joined by David Ozus. Awesome. Hello. 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 Like the stories. The I can't hear you. The mic somehow like turned up really high or something. <laughs> shall I shall I turn it down a bit? Yeah, it's yes, please. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, better. Can you say better, 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 yeah, better, slower, that's it, lower. Right there. Okay. There you go. Okay. David Ozus. Thank you so much for joining me. Sorry if I frightened you with my theatrics. Uh, Very much. <laughs> you are the author of Collected Stories. Uh, this book just you just published this book, correct? Yeah, well, last year. So this is a series. I've been writing other stuff in the past, but this is um, this is the first. Co- I've decided to to focus on short stories. When I say short stories, they're sort of eight eight to ten thousand words. Right. Um, and so I'm trying to finish up volume two in the next month or so and then go back to the novel to to wrap that up so it's but i do think it's the way forward i think short stories the short form is is due for a revival um i i i agree completely um and we were talking uh, talking about attention spans a little bit before we started the show um and even with things like twitter like i find it i find myself inundated with so many like short sporadic lines of text that trying to dig into something longer than like eight ten thousand words or whatever it it does become more difficult it takes a lot longer and a lot more focus and concentration um but is but short stories there it's in my opinion i think and you can speak to this better than me because i don't write short stories as often as you but do you find have you you've written um longer form before this correct yeah so in the early 2000s i've written a couple of novels this was before the digital age when you you couldn't self-publish as it were you know online you couldn't publish online so i wrote a couple of novels and i was sending them out and this is in the late 90s and early 2000s um and you spent you can commit a year or two or three writing a book and then if it doesn't hit the market if it doesn't pull in an audience then you're struggling then you've committed all this time you don't have anything to show for it so the thinking was for the short stories i would commit to a time to deliver a shorter story and have a dozen stories i have seven in collected in collector stories volume one and i'm going to aim for about seven in each but if then you're spreading your your risk as it were so some might take off that's the feeling um but then you're not committing yourself to full a full-blown novel and if it doesn't if it doesn't jump off the shelves then you've got other things to push and then with online you can publish individual stories as individual downloads that was the thinking behind it so that people wouldn't have to buy or download a book they could do they could do a short form for a you know 99 cents um and then might they might be reading it i mean the thinking was you know people when the kindle came out and when and when ipads came came out people were downloading books yeah i thought if you could download and you could download you know uh, magazines if you could download shorter stories that people on their commute to work on the tube or you know on the train they could they could dip into the short stories it might be an appealing thing and so if you could drum up a lot of material over the years then people can pick and choose you're not committing to one genre or anything so i thought it was a work no that's a brilliant idea because you see the way the way music used to be um consumed in that same format and it's yeah it's like now we're we used to buy records and then albums and and cds and then download whole albums but now it's like we buy by the song like we we just purchase the song we want that's that's genius man you are a genius. <laughs> well, I, I haven't got the funds to show it, so. <laughs> no, but I feel like you're that that makes total sense to me, because I feel like that's the way people want to consume anything now is, 
is like pick out a la carte style, pick out what they want. Or if they do have something that they love, like the way Netflix does it with, with stuff is like have everything available so you can just watch it all. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Well, that's um, how, I mean, that's my understanding of how novels started anyway with the early sort of novel, you know, with, you know, Dickens and so on, when they were Jane Austen, when they were writing their no- novels, they didn't launch it in one big book. It was on in a serial in a magazine. So it was right. like a bit like a soap opera. And then it was yeah. brought, brought out in um, in longer form. So I think it's, it's something that's been done before. But I think with people's attention span now, uh, if you can if you can grab them on smaller material, that would be that's the way in. And then you can spread, as I said, spread your risk in terms of the different genres you're using, whether it's fantasy. You might pull in some people with a fantasy. You might pull some others with um ghost stories or sort of romance or contemporary stuff or space you know and then then you're finding different audiences and bringing them all together this is well that's let's let's talk about that too because your your short stories the the collected stories the one that you have out now the volume one it does have multiple different genres within it right yeah yeah and then the, the beauty the plan is they're collected stories so when i'm for the, for the other volumes, there are sequels to the short stories in the other volumes. Okay. So so you have, in volume one, you have Scary Afternoon in the Garden. In volume two, you have Scary Morning in the Woods, and they are sequels. Okay. Cool. And then the, the idea is, later on, you could bring all those stories together in one volume. So the collector stories, you're pulling from different genres, but then later on, you could produce them you could it's like a remix it's like a a greatest hits in terms of you know music you have the albums and then you have the greatest hits yeah greatest hits ghost stories greatest hits so you can you can repeat this is the thinking this is this is you know my Um, plan you have a it's a wonderful plan um it seriously sounds like a, a fantastic plan how long have you been working on the this idea like you said, you published Collected Stories a year ago, right? Yeah, so I I think it was when everything became digital in the 2000s, I became aware, when the iPads and Kindles came out, and you okay. see people on the train reading, you know, from from Kindles, and people were saying, this is the way to go, everything's going to be read on Kindles, you know, paperbacks are going to die out. But then people have a 20-minute commute or a 30-minute commute, so if you can give them a bite size, um, like a, almost like a soap opera or, you know, of episodes of short stories that are connected maybe in a greater theme because you're using the same characters, you're creating the same universe, a bit sure. like the Marvel universe. Sure. You're creating different stories in, in the universe. So some of the characters will appear in different stories and then also you can play around with time Um use a location and alternate realities that that once you read them you can see that they're connected this is um this is the plan the longer term plan to build up this yeah. universe so that so to answer your question it was in the 2000s when the kindle came out and i was thinking short short form and then the stories that i that prompt me to write yeah i realized i would i would have to pad them out if i wanted to make them a, a book right so so the first the first one that really was the key was Legend of Muam Tam Se, which is in Collected Stories Volume One. I, I got the story, but I thought I couldn't I couldn't pad this out to a, a longer form. And so I thought maybe it might be seventy seventy um pages long. So I thought I would I would then start commit to, to, to bringing these stories and making them tight. And I was a fan of Ray Bradbury. I don't know if you're a Ray Bradbury yeah. fan. I've read Fahrenheit four five one. You did that one, right? Have you read these? He does short stories. I have not. I'd recommend no. these. Okay. He does. He does the short stories, and those were great when I was growing up. Yeah. Um, so I realised that there was potential to to push for a creator, a sort of living, as it were, through through short stories rather than long form. Right. Because as I said, when I was doing the the first two novels you know you'd send it out if people weren't buying or biting then you've wasted a few years you know it's yeah, you've, exactly. you've lost like crap. but if you've invested yeah it. but after a year if you've got a 
if you knock out a dozen short stories in a year, two of them might be, might, you know, hit the ground running. So what is, let, let's talk about what genre you feel where you really nail at home, because I mean, you're hitting on a bunch of different genres and for a lot of authors that can be kind of a daunting task. Um, because we have, we all have our comfort zones, I think, where we write in. Where do you, how do you, you feel like you uh, do a pretty good job in certain areas? Like, it, I mean, uh, you got some horror stories, you got some sci-fi, you got some um, stuff like that. What, what's your, what's your favorite genre to write in? Um, I don't have a, I don't, it's really the story that dictates the genre. So okay. I don't, so the story idea comes and then I just go with it. And if it's a horror, if it's a ghost story, then I'll go with a ghost story. If it's, if it's sort of as a space element or set in an alternate universe, then I'll just, just go with it because in some way that's partly the joy of writing short stories is you're experimenting. Every journey is different. Yeah. You can just spend, you know, 10,000 words on, you know, on uh, traveling through space with, you know, with these characters talking and then 10,000 words on a ghost story, you know, set by the seaside right. or something in this misty village. So um, I let I let the stories dictate. Um, I'm sure that there, there are some things that, that won't work out, but I like to think it's everyone's an experiment when I sit down to write. So yeah. I don't I don't profess to be a, an expert in anything. I mean, maybe over time, you know, I might gravitate towards some or the other. Those are the okay. <laughs> those that pay generate a return. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that goes. Well, do you have a story um, in Collective Stories Volume One that's that stands out as your favorite that you'd like to highlight? Um, any of them that really just kind of like did something different for you? Uh, well, they're all my babies. I know, right? This is like so, your favorite child. So, I love asking this. So, <laughs> so I, I, I can't. Um, and in some ways, it if it if it hits, if it finds its audience, if one story finds one audience, uh -huh. then that's that that will give me sort of satisfaction. I don't. I think there are different audiences in these in these short stories. Absolutely. But if you're going to if you're going to push push me on one. I mean, okay. I, I don't know. I think the Florin <laughs> smile is a fable that I okay. quite like. And if people get it, then then uh, that would be good. But then I look at Fear of Lions, which is pretty dark, but it's funny. Can I read, this? Can I read the synopsis you gave me for the Florin smile? Yeah, Florence yeah smile? sure. The Florin smile by David Ozus. This is the synopsis. Um, a meteor shower brings a new chemical compound to Earth, resulting in a change to some people's smile and or brain chemistry the new florin smile soon has far more currency than the u.s dollar gbp pound as it changes the way people assess and assign value in modern society so yeah so i can explain how i came up with that idea if it's i mean i was right i mean putting money on people's just... smiles is well, that... no, not money, but it was the idea I was sitting at, you know, like most people, you struggle to earn a living. I was, yeah, I was browsing one weekend, you know, houses and things of where to live. I rent at the moment. I have, I have owned in the past, but I was thinking, you know, I need to, to think about buying, but you see all these properties that cost vast amounts of money, especially in London. And I don't understand how people can make that money. And people put a lot of value in properties, you know, properties in different parts. Sure. And then, then I was thinking, if something changed, people will only put value on, say, a property if people are willing to, if others are willing to buy it to pay that money. So if, for instance, I mean, I, I did think of if there was a flooding or if there was like a dirty bomb, let's say, that went off, mm -hmm. made a certain part of London radioactive, all those the value in the properties would just drop to nothing right. from, from 10 million for a smart apartment to, to nothing. Right. So I was thinking that. People will only pay what they think it has. You know, it's all a matter of perception. Sure. So I thought, so I thought what about if um, something happened otherworldly that, that people didn't put value on property, but put, put value on a smile, a particular smile, and that's how people 
they put worth onto peop- a particular type of smile. Okay. It's sort of like this is why you have to read the story. Yeah, it's definitely to explain. But it's I just mean, like something happened in the brain that 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 people with value or celebrity or uh, people with you know money or celebrity loses all the appeal. Just imagine it. But just a smile, a brilliant smile, became the thing that people chased. Ah, um, I understand. So it turned the world upside down because people just didn't celebrity or money didn't chase money because everybody was chasing the smile either yeah. certainly they heard rumor that somebody had this smile it could be it could be somebody on the lowest rungs of society if they had yeah. that smile yeah. it was like yeah. they were now upper echelon of human race kind of deal yeah. yeah they they became they became the celebrity without the celebrity they had the winning <laughs> smile right <laughs> So that's that was the thinking. So the, the story is broken down. I mean, in terms of structuring, I, I've now moved into this way of structuring sh- stories into like maybe seven or eight mini chapters, again, to make it digestible for the sure. short term, you know. And so in the Florian Smile, it's these are scenes about um, different people who've got smile, you know, a smile and how it changes, changes yeah. the way people interact. Um, I don't know. You'd have to... I, this is why I write it down because I can't explain it. No, um, and that's so that's I've, the whole that's the coolest thing about writing, right? It's like we have these ideas, these amazing concepts that pop up into our head, and we want to tell the world them all the all the amazing visions that we have, and we're like, I don't know how the hell the heck to get this out, and the only way we can do it is by writing out in whatever form it comes out. But that's the that's the other cool thing, like with the short story, you have to compress this amazing vision that you have in your mind into eight to ten thousand words, where a lot of people. Um, the majority of uh, authors are, are publishing, you know, the hundred, hundred thousand plus word novels, um, fitting in an idea into a short story. I mean, I, I suppose it's, it is akin to writing a te- television series as opposed to writing a film or a movie kind of, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it's been really useful because you, you edit, you only put stuff in there that really matters yeah and when you're cutting it down if it you know there's no fluff so when i i was a year or so ago i was looking back at the no, the novels i was writing in the early 2000 you know the late 90s yeah um, and they were a hundred thousand words long each but there was so much padding and i was like Thank right. you, oh, this is awful you know this is dreadful <laughs> but now now i just you know if it, it has to do something very specific so each mini chapter is maybe three pages long a scene yeah. in a short story and um it has to pack a punch it has to be there for a reason there's no fluff you know the dial you know half a page of dialogue you know in exchange in it so i think it's it's a very good exercise it's to do anyway for writing so when i'm doing the, the novel i'm bringing that experience if it if it's if it doesn't do a very specific purpose it goes and it's really it's been a useful exercise so i'd recommend it well yeah i mean you're bringing as much quality as possible into your yeah. stories it's like like you say cutting away i read a review online today saying i usually judge a book by how many pages i skip <laughs> because yeah. honest to god like and i was talking uh, with a friend about this the other day but like feeling like forcing yourself to get a word count in um so you can meet a certain requirement seems kind of silly but when you're just trying to make a, a story that is, a, you know, that vision come to life and yeah. uh, really compressing it and making it like the the biggest neutron bomb you can make it and punch people in the face with a fantastic, fantastic story. It's something that, that's something uh, good to do, I assume. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why, why should a story be 190 or 100,000 words long? I mean, yeah, they're I all know. different. <laughs> sizes. So I think, um, so I try to make the story fit you know the word count fit the story so it's some are six thousand words some are sort of thirteen thousand words but i i try and move it along well i'm I'm excited you sent me a, a copy of your book um here it is for everybody mm-hmm. to see and you also sent me a bunch of uh like you have you have the david o zeus um signage behind you marketing for for books now I feel like marketing yeah. and promoting and, and selling anything now is completely different than it ever used to be. Um, how have you gone about this time getting your work out there? 
having people see it like what's the process been like for you well that that has been more difficult i'm not instinctively a salesman um and with this sort of online social media stuff it's something i'm learning yeah uh twitter is something i've got my head around now and i'm doing more of it um i've got a website i'm trying to do more blogging i think this kind of thing that you're doing i think i'm i'm a shout out to you because i think you've done very well in and you've been, oh. been doing this since december i think it's amazing this kind of thing the pod the podcasting yeah um is also the way because i tend to watch podcasts now watch and listen to podcasts now than than watch tv program you know because it's so easy yeah um so i i see you as as the joe rogan of um of the, <laughs> oh, uh, man. the writer's world yeah give it he's been going for what nearly 10 years give it a wow. few, you know, your build up and then you'll be so this is why it's good to to get Dang, in on the man. ground level yeah i think Thank i think you. this is i think this is the way to go to have the podcasts um and i think yeah i i mean that's why i said yeah yes to you because i thought what your your style is really good and your levity and your <laughs> personable you're, you're you are style. a podcast yeah <laughs> you got, you've got style map <laughs> style baby style baby yeah people call it people call yeah. it other things besides style but i'll, I'll take style thank you yeah. that's amazing that is a yeah. fantastic like man just being compared to joe rogan holy crap um yeah <laughs> that's something else but it is it is, like the marketing today is so much different i feel and it's just like with writing attention spans are so hard to to capture we have to we have to sell things and the whole reason i started doing any of this i got on twitter because i wanted to market my book and i was just chasing people down trying to beat them over the head with it and i was like this is so stupid <laughs> what the hell am i doing you know and there's there we, it's like we have to build value in our brand um so we're we're not asking anyone to buy our, our material they want to buy it because they want to be a part of it it's like mm -hmm. what apple did with um ipod ipad all that kind of stuff people want to be a part of that culture no, not necessarily like they're not being told to buy it they just want to be a part of it they want to take part in what the product represents yeah and but for for an individual person like for you and me as authors to work on building that oh my god it feels like such a massive undertaking right yeah i mean i think i mean one of the first things i did was design a logo i got i have a designer friend i worked with and so we came up with this the logo so that you can put on letterheads so i have i have business cards with the yeah. logo hold it out there you go yeah that's business card move it over that then one. i have the, postcards the mm -hmm. and then i so i think that um it becomes a recognizable brand and then as i was saying to you i think it was before we started recording i oh. bought this especially for matt um <laughs> i had this so it's an a1 it's an a1 board but i think because there's so many people out there because i mean social media becomes a de de democratizing process that everybody can do it, which is good but then you have to be a bit distinct Right. you have to be recognizable so having a logo and and having postcards and business cards and other things that you're laying the groundwork so that people can can recognize it that's the thinking behind it so i i see it as an investment worth yeah you know, worthwhile investment absolutely so you, should, you, should get, you should get one of these done get a <laughs> i want to where did you go where did you go to get that done at just a local print shop um i had a logo it's basically a blow up of my business card and i that was 25 quid so that's probably about 35 dollars maybe it's on a it's on a foam board a1 size the biggest you can get yeah stick behind you that's a great idea and uh and uh and then it's useful so if you if you're ever out you know out and about at a book fair then you've got something to stick stick on a table yeah and that's so important it, it is all about branding too um i feel like on being on twitter and social media 
as being authors, Twitter is a great place because it's literally just text. And so we're allowed to kind of do it in short form, kind of show who we are in short form writing all day long. Um, and it's like these mini billboards for ourselves constantly. So yeah. I feel like it's a great place for us to let our freak flag fly. <laughs> like however you're weird or however you're different, like yeah. let that baby let that baby fly and let people know who you are. And I feel like this is for anybody that whatever you love, like whatever David Ozus, whatever turns you on, man, whatever like lights you up to write about, as long as you're doing that stuff, people are gonna be like, Well, I like that too. Let me see. Like, yeah. I want to hang out with David Ozus. I want to. I want to read his stories because that's the kind of stuff I like. Like, we always we can all find our own crowd as long as we're doing our own thing. Yeah. You know. Do you feel like no, I, writing in multiple genres? It, it's it's hard to find that voice, or are you able to? Do you feel like you can find your voice pretty well in each story you tell? I find it well. I. It's my take on on the, each genre, so I'm not trying to. I just do what I do in that genre, if you see what I mean. So a ghost story yeah. is a ghost story is as I would write it. So I don't I don't feel that I'm writing in in conflicting genres. I, it all feels okay. pretty natural to me. Yeah. Um, but it's just sort of my take. But then you might, you know, one one I'm writing some apocalyptic type stories. And that might bring in some readers, one one type of reader. But then, if they like it, then they might go to the ghost story, or some other fantasy. So it's, I'm hoping that that some readers will come for one particular genre, but right. then they might be curious. It might be a way of introducing them to other genres. So, yeah, I I just I don't really think too much about the genres. You know that I'm thinking in, I'm writing in a particular genre because I think I'll just screw it up if I. Talk too much. <laughs> yeah, don't think. Hey, man, that's the thing. Like, try not to think too much, right? Because yeah, when, and that that brings me to this question. So, when you sit when you sit down to write, do you have this fully formed idea in your mind? Do you are you somebody who plots out ideas, or do you kind of go with a feeling and you're like, I feel like I need to write today, and you you sit down and, and knock out some words? Like, how is your what's your process like when it comes to writing? Well, I have. It's normally an, an idea, a hook that that I start with, um, and then there's normally it's a beginning, middle, and end. And I I try and break those up into let's say seven segments, seven yeah. chapters, um, and and I I map out as far as I can those seven, you know, saying this moves on to here, to here, to here, and then I just hit hit each each chapters as I can. Uh, and then just edit and re-edit and rewrite. And they, 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 the good. Another good thing about short stories is that you can move between one and an, and another. So some mm. stories I haven't I haven't looked at for a month or so because I've been working on these two, and then I want to break from that and I'll go to these these two, and push those along. So that's um. So I have a, a bunch stacked up. Do you feel like you learn from writing other stories? Like if you set a story aside for a while, do you feel like while you're working on another story, you learn kind of what you need to do in the next story? Is there is there some of that transient process where it kind of like bleeds over into the rest of your work? Yeah, I mean, there is the more I do, the more I learn. So I'm sort of looking forward to launching this Collected Stories Volume 2. Mm -hmm. because i think it'll be sharp you know be better improved you know, be, i've learned stuff from having doing <laughs> following one yeah. um uh so it does and then you learn about the the short story process you know just keeping it short and sharp but then you try and mix it up um right. some so some stories i might have a character and i follow it all the way through sometimes the scenes might be different characters you know or different scenes that are unrelated and now more recently in the last few months when i've been plotting these other stories i've realized that they belong to the same universe in that a bit like middle earth tolkien's middle earth okay. or the marvel universe you know there, right. there are characters in different parts of that universe sure. and you refer to them and then that gives you some so you're laying the groundwork 
for some of the stories. Um, so you ask, you know, about what does one story carry over from another? Well, I, I might be plotting one story. So, for instance, uh, one story I'm working on is um, I make references to the other short stories, which are completely unrelated in a completely different genre. Mm -hmm. But I'm referring to, so this magical wood, for instance. Okay. So there's this scene about um, um, based around uh, a wood, and another story is talking about this forest that has a different you know quality and a different alternate, a different universe, as it were. Mm -hmm. But they're going to be linked. So once a reader's read them, they understand that there's part of a, a universe. So it's like Middle Earth. I got you. Middle Earth, you know. Um, so you've got the Shire and you've got Mordor. Um, right, so right. You base you base a story in the Shire about yeah. you know people falling in love over an apple pie, but they refer to Mordor, and then yeah. you have a story about Mordor and and about baddies, but you know. All that kind of thing. So okay. I, that's what I'm developing now. So I'm I'm aware now that I'm creating this universe longer term. That's pretty cool. Yeah, which yeah, it would it could uh, end up lending to some massive <laughs> collaboration of all these characters or things meeting up at one point, like an Avengers style <laughs> mashup giant story. Uh, not not at the moment um, at the because moment. they're in different time zones. They're in different. Although it's the same universe, they're in they're in different different worlds. It's difficult Space to explain. The they're different. Yeah, yeah. Um, I understand. But yeah, no, but it's it's good. It's a sort of that learning. Would be one so, hell of a crazy crossover, and only a man with the last name Zeus could make it happen. I believe. Mm. <laughs> of course, that's awesome. And so, actually, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sorry, it features. You... I mean, yeah, it features because I I have an interest in Greek mythology as well. Um, okay. So some Greek mythology is working its way into some of the stories as well. So Greek mythology yeah, is so good. cool, man. The gods of the gaps, like it's amazing yeah. the the stories that have come out of that that culture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we can get collected stories. It's available online in uh, ebook download and paperback, which I have the paperback right on Amazon. Yeah correct um and then volume two is said to be i hear possible release of later on this year is that is that correct well i've done uh i've pretty much finished six of the seven stories and they're being sort of read i'm getting feedback now on them i'm trying to wrap up the seventh story okay um and then i can the idea is you you also make them available for download as single short stories online through Amazon. So you don't have to buy a collected book. You can buy the single. The, you, know, the, you have, like, you have a artwork done for, like I see the dot matrix, fear of lions. Like you have artwork done for all of those as well. Uh, yeah. 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 So they, they work as downloads, um, single stories. Where's, where's my. Yeah. That's, so it's I've really done neat. I've done those. So the idea is like they're like mini books. So if you download it onto an i an iPad or a Kindle, then then you've got a little short story with some artwork. Um, and then I'm toying with the idea of putting up more artwork artwork for the the coming stories. But I've got to get them designed, and there's a bit of money there mm. if I need to to spend. Um, but uh, yeah. So that's the idea. And I think it also works having this kind of thing works as a visual on, on websites if you have a picture. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's such, it's such a great idea um, to go about it that way. And so you get, man, you can, so for everybody out there, you can download each version or each story that's available in collected stories also on Amazon. Um, and you can find like Dot Matrix, Fear of Lions. All these stories are also like if you uh, they have descriptions of them if you look them up on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. The Florin Smile is the one I haven't. Uh, there isn't a, an ebook copy of that yet. Um, okay. But uh, this is there's a bunch of jobs I have to do, as you know. Yeah, it's a lot advertising <laughs> and. Um, well, that's the thing with self-publishing, right? It takes a—it's a, a one-man army, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. 
but it's uh it's good i hope you know i'm 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 in it for the long game so i think yeah. that, that hopefully you build up build up a following you know over time yeah i think you i think you do and especially um it sounds like the stories have have a unique perspective to them i look forward to to, to digging into um i've already started reading dot matrix today but i look i look forward to um, reading some of the rest of the stories later on this afternoon um okay. yeah I, david i really appreciate the time you've uh, taken out to come join me on the joe rogan show i mean the, thank uh, you you know what interview show? thanks joe yeah <laughs> and thanks uh, trust so me much. trust me i'll give it five years let it be let it be known that i was the first to to say it so that you know when you do have your when you're podcasting from a studio in california or where it is or georgia then my um, with logos in the background slash, yeah i know <laughs> just say say this man david zeus was the man who who said it first i will i'll give you full credit for that and you yeah. can come I'll, I'll fly you over to uh to america and you can come hang out in the studio with me good we will do talk about your books um thanks again for coming on i really do appreciate it uh david ozeus you can follow him on twitter at david ozeus uh, you're also on Facebook, correct? Yeah, but I I haven't populated it much. But I need to. It's one you're of those there. things I have to do. You know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's hey, when you it's talk just, about yeah. learning, when you talk about learning the process of like becoming a business unto yourself. I mean, it takes so much, so much work. Um, yeah. So follow him on Twitter, at David Ozus. Uh, find his book, Collected Stories, with multiple different. Um, you can buy a la carte, Dot Matrix, Fear of Lions and multiple others are available online. And Collected Stories Volume 2 should be out later this year, potentially. In the summer. And I mean, I just want to wrap it all up by Easter, and then I just need to format it and upload it. Good. Awesome. Well, thanks again, David. I uh, really appreciate okay. it. Thank you. You stay safe out there, okay? No tubing uh, too late. No. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I meant to add. What the heck is tubing? <laughs> like you said, tubing. You said, like, uh, taking the train... The trolley. Or... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the underground in London. Oh, okay. Uh, the subway. Well, probably in subway, the state. Yeah. You know, it's the, the underground train in in London is known as the tube. So, okay. but I realise I need to translate. It. <laughs> yeah. I need to, I need to Google Translate. I was like, Yeah, yeah. What was, what was he talking about? <laughs> awesome, man. Okay. Well, thanks so much. We'll talk later. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Matt. You're welcome. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?